I'll let you read the screen while we listen to what's going on at the Antarctica Larsen Ice Shelf. This brings me to the second canary in the coal mine, Antarctica, the largest mass of ice on the planet by far. A friend of mine said in 1978, if you see the breakup of ice shelves along the Antarctic Peninsula, watch out because that should be seen as an alarm bell for global warming. And actually, if you look at the uh, peninsula up close, every place where you see one of these uh, green blotches here is an ice shelf larger than the state of Rhode Island that has broken up just in the last uh, 15 to 20 years. I want to focus on just one of them. It's called Larson B. I want you to look at these black pools here. It makes it seem almost as if we're looking through the ice to the ocean beneath, but that's an illusion. This is melting water that forms in these pools. And if you were flying over it in a helicopter, you'd see it's 700 feet tall. They are so majestic, so massive. In the distance are the mountains, and just before the mountains is the shelf of the continent there. This is floating ice, and there's land-based ice on the downslope of those mountains. From here to the mountains, is about 20 to 25 miles. Now they thought this would be stable for at least 100 years, even with global warming. The scientists who study these ice shelves were absolutely astonished when they were looking at these images, starting on January 31, 2002, in a period of 35 days, this ice shelf completely disappeared. They could not figure out how in the world this happened so rapidly. And they went back to try to figure out where they'd gone wrong, and that's when they focused on those pools of melting water. But even before they could figure out what had happened there, something else started going wrong. When the floating sea base ice cracked up, it no longer held back the ice on the land, and the land-based ice then started falling into the ocean. It was like letting the cork out of a bottle. And there's a difference between floating ice and land-based ice. It's like the difference between an ice cube floating in a glass of water, which when it melts doesn't raise the level of water in the glass, and a cube that's sitting atop a stack of ice cubes, which melts and flows over the edge. That's why the citizens of these Pacific nations have all had to evacuate to New Zealand. But I want to focus on West Antarctica because it illustrates two factors about land-based ice and sea-based ice. It's a little of both. It's propped up on tops of islands, but the ocean comes up underneath it. So as the ocean gets warmer, it has an impact on it. If this were to, to go, sea level worldwide would go up 20 feet. They've measured disturbing changes on the underside of this ice sheet. It's considered relatively more stable, however, than another big body of ice that's roughly the same size. Greenland would also raise sea level almost 20 feet if it went. A friend of mine just brought back some pictures of what's going on in Greenland right now. Dramatic changes. These are the same kinds of pools that form here on this ice shelf in Antarctica. And the scientists thought that when that water seeped back into the ice, it would just refreeze. But they found out that actually what happens is that it just keeps on going. It tunnels to the bottom and makes the ice like Swiss cheese, or like termites. This shows what happens to the crevasses. And when lakes form, they create what are called moulins. The water goes down to the bottom, and it lubricates where the ice meets the bedrock. See these people here for scale? This is not on the edge of Greenland. This is in the middle of the ice mass. This is a massive rushing torrent of fresh meltwater tunneling straight down through the Greenland ice to the bedrock below. Now, to some extent, there has always been seasonal melting and moulins have formed in the past, but not like now. In 1992, they measured this amount of melting in Greenland. Ten years later, this is what happened. And here's the melting from 2005. 
Tony Blair, scientific advisor, has said that because of what's happening in Greenland right now, the map of the world will have to be redrawn. If Greenland broke up and melted, or if half of Greenland and half of West Antarctica broke up and melted, this is what would happen to the sea level in Florida. This is what would happen to San Francisco Bay. A lot of people live in these areas. The Netherlands, one of the low countries, absolutely devastating. The area around Beijing that's home to tens of millions of people. Even worse, in the area around Shanghai, there are 40 million people. Worse still, Calcutta and to the east, Bangladesh, the area covered includes 60 million people. Think of the impact of a couple hundred thousand refugees when they're displaced by an environmental event. And then imagine the impact of a hundred million or more. Here's Manhattan. This is the World Trade Center memorial site. And after the horrible events of 9-11, we said never again. But this is what would happen to Manhattan. They can measure this precisely, just as the scientists could predict precisely how much water would reach the levees in New Orleans. The area where the World Trade Center Memorial is to be located would be underwater. Is it possible that we should prepare against other threats besides terrorists? Maybe we should be concerned about other problems as well. So this is what New York could look like if sea levels rise as he is saying they might. One more emotional pitch for you, this time featuring a polar bear. When the sun's rays hit the ice, more than 90% of it bounces off right back into space like a mirror. But when it hits the open ocean, more than 90% of it is absorbed. And so as the surrounding water gets warmer, it speeds up the melting of the ice. Right now, the Arctic ice cap acts like a giant mirror. All the sun's rays bounce off more than 90%. It keeps the earth cooler. That's an important now, point to remember about the open ocean sees that sun's energy. how so glaciers benefit us. Reflect absorbed. that sun's energy. So there is a faster buildup of heat here at the North Pole in the Arctic Ocean and the Arctic generally than anywhere else on the planet. That's not good for creatures like polar bears who depend on the ice. A new scientific study shows that for the first time they're finding polar bears that have actually drowned, swimming long distances, up to 60 miles to find the ice. And they didn't find that before. But what does it mean to us to look at a vast expanse of open water at the top of our world that used to be covered by ice? And we'll finish with what glaciers look like around the world. And now we're beginning to see the impact in the real world. This is Mount Kilimanjaro more than 30 years ago and more recently. And a friend of mine just came back from Kilimanjaro with a picture he took a couple months ago. Another friend, Lonnie Thompson, studies glaciers. Here's Lonnie with a last sliver of one of the once mighty glaciers. Within the decade, there will be no more snows of Kilimanjaro. This is happening in Glacier National Park. I climbed to the top of this in 1998 with one of my daughters. Within 15 years, this will be the park formerly known as Glacier. Here is what's been happening year by year to the Columbia Glacier. It just retreats every single year. And it's a shame because these glaciers are so beautiful. But those who go up to see them, Here's what they're seeing every day now. In the Himalayas, uh, there's a particular problem because 40% of all the people in the world get their drinking water 
from rivers and spring systems that are fed more than half by the meltwater coming off the glaciers. And within this next half century, those 40% uh, of the people on Earth are going to face a very serious shortage because uh, of this melting. Italy, the Italian Alps, same site today. An old postcard from Switzerland throughout the Alps, we're seeing the same story. It's also true in uh, South America. This is Peru 15 years ago and the same glacier today. This is Argentina 20 years ago, same glacier today. 75 years ago in Patagonia on the tip of South America, this vast expanse of ice is now gone. There is a message in this. It is worldwide. And that wraps up glaciers.